Hi, this is Bob from Formatred Company. Today we're going to show you installing Formatred self-leveling on a Melcher composite ramp. These are the steps and it'll also review some of the items that are helpful to have for the installation. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at info at rgfmaterials.com. We're a division of RGF Materials. Formatred self-leveling is sold and supplied as a kit. The kit comes with 45 pounds of aggregate in one carton and 45 pounds of aggregate in another carton, so a total of 90 pounds. It also comes with two gallons of epoxy binder. You have a gallon of A and a gallon of part B. One of the most important steps is to ensure that the surface is clean, dry, and sound. You want to make sure any loose particles, any previous coatings applied to the ramp are removed if they're not sound or they're not well adhered. The reliability, the durability of Formatred self-leveling will be affected by the soundness of the, of the surface that it is adhered to. So we found a good tool here, a stiff wire brush. It's obviously, this is a, a board, it's not a melcher ramp. This is just going to give you the steps. So you're just going to remove that surface dust, any kind of friable or material on the surface, going back and forth. This should be done with the entire ramp. After that's done, you should either uh, use a, a shop vac and remove all the dust and dirt. Again, clean, dry, and sound. Today I'm just going to, uh, you can also use a broom and brush off any, any, uh, any loose material, any dirt. The next step is to apply a, a, a tape to the side, like a blue tape, or if, if that, this isn't adhering well, you can always use a, a duct tape. It also will save, save material. Uh, typically, you don't need, right on the edge of the ramp, you don't need uh, the material there, the uh, aggregate. So this will save a little bit. You can also apply the tape over the lip of the ramp to keep that from having aggregate on it. But uh, this, is a, this is a good next step. The next step is measuring and mixing and applying the epoxy binder. Just a note about safety and cleanliness on the work area. It's, uh, we highly suggest that you wear safety gloves and also safety glasses. Taking a, a, a drop cloth and putting around the area is also helpful you know, just to catch any drips. Even having a drop cloth over on the side where you can take some of your tools that may have the binder on it and just put that over there so no one steps in it or you know, gets it on themselves. Also it's helpful to have uh, some paper towels and um, some uh, solvent Towel, white towels, we pick these up at a local hardware store. They're not very expensive. They're just good for cleaning up tools, maybe if it drips on something, a surface where you want to remove it. If you remove it right away, it's very easy. Just wipe it with this towel. The next step is to measure and mix the epoxy binder. For one ramp, you will need a half a gallon of the resin and a half a gallon of the hardener. We recommend that you use a separate pail measure a half a gallon into this one and get another one and do a half a gallon of the hardener in the second one. Don't try to mix it all in the, don't try to measure them in the mixing, in the mixing vessel. These are picked up at your local hardware store. You can see they have the, the measurements here. So that makes it really handy and they're disposable. Once you've measured the half gallon of part A resin into this container and a half gallon into this container, you're ready then to pour them into the mixing vessel. Again, you can get these larger containers, the 10 quart. You can see I've measured off one gallon, so I'm gonna pour a half gallon of A. This will be empty. It's oftentimes good to have a paint mixing stick. And then I'll, have a, I'll do the same thing with a half gallon of part B. Since I don't have a, a melcher ramp here, I'm gonna do this now next with a smaller smaller volume of epoxy binder. I'll show that next. The next steps are to, now I'm going to show you uh, uh, dispensing the, uh, pouring the A and the B in the mixing container. We'll mix that. So we want to make sure we have everything ready, including uh, obviously the mixing 
mystery stick, and then the spreader. So I, for an irregular surface, I would recommend uh, a disposable paintbrush. If you have a smoother surface, you can use a squeegee to squeegee it. Uh, so for Melcher Ramp, perhaps uh, the, this brush would be better. For very large surfaces, you might have a, a squeegee on the end of a, a broom handle. So here you go, I'm gonna pour part A. Normally I wouldn't pour this right over the, the, uh, the ramp like I'm doing now, just but there's a, I'm so, I don't have a lot of space here, so I'm gonna try to keep this all together. Uh, there we go, that's A's done. Let's pour that right in. So our goal here is we're gonna try and mix this and apply it, spread it, and apply the aggregate within Within 10 minutes, because uh, if it's a really hot day, this aggregate is going to start curing. We want to get that binder uh, spread, and we want that aggregate on the binder as as soon as possible. So I would try to uh, you'd probably have a little bit more time, but I would try and uh, set that as a goal. So here we go. So I'm just going to mix this for three minutes. We don't want to whip air into this at all. We want to mix this keeping the mixing stick in, in the container. We don't want to whip any air into it. You'll notice if you're whipping air into it, it turns cloudy. You don't want that. You just want to keep as much air free as possible. I'm just going to do this for about three minutes. Maybe a little less since this is not much material here. For this board, I calculated we only needed about 10 fluid ounces. So that's what you're seeing here is a total of 10, five of resin, resin and five of harder. Okay, I've finished mixing. Now I'm ready to apply the epoxy binder. What I would recommend doing is, uh, and it's helpful if you have someone to work with you on this, but just put it down one side of the uh, ramp, bring it back the up other side, maybe down the center, bring it back up like this. And this is gonna help you uh, spread the material more easily, quickly. There we go. So I have a little bit left over. I'm just gonna leave, let that sit there for a second. Now, if I need more, I'll, I can add more later, but this seems to be good. So try and work it into the corners where the tape is, but try not to get too much on the tape. You wanna use the epoxy binder most, as efficiently as possible. You can see this is a smooth surface. I could even, I'll show you here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tr show you the squeegee method. And that just floats. Don't press too hard. You want, little, you want some thickness there. Just don't press too hard. The material is semi self leveling, so it's not going to flow down the ramp. You should have the ramp as, as level as possible. So, again, I think with the previous Melcher coating on there, which is somewhat irregular, it may be better to use a, a brush in order to uh, get it down into the cracks and crevices. There we go. All right, well, that's, that's very good. I can see, you see, it's all self-leveling now, so even if you, if you don't have it quite even, it's gonna, it's gonna end up uh, leveling itself out nicely. Okay. That's done. Now I have my aggregate here. I have my 45 pounds of aggregate. Again, we're only using one carton of aggregate, half the binder and half the aggregate. So the one carton, you want to make sure you have someone that's helpful to have two people do this. Get it down as quickly as possible. This aggregate here is, an, is a, a non-slip. Uh, it's considered a decorative non-skid aggregate. And this is actually going to fall into the binder bonded permanently to the surface. And I, I suggest applying this, give, it, give the whole ramp a once over, make sure you, you uh, are able to cover most of the area and then as the aggregate starts to sink slightly into the binder, you can then add more as needed. So you can see that covered most of it, but obviously there are areas that need need more. So I'm just going to fill those in. Hopefully you can see this on the on the film.
once you've got good coverage, you see good coverage, wait a minute or two and notice if there are any low spots. You can see here there's a little bit of a shiny, that means shiny area, that usually means the aggregate is falling into the epoxy binder and there's a little bit, you can see the liquid epoxy. So that's indication that it can accept more of the aggregate. So I'm just going to cover that. Again, we want to do this as quickly as possible, so have everything ready. Everything ready. Once you start measuring, once you start mixing the, the binder, you should have that aggregate right at hand, just at hand, all your tools there because this goes quickly. You want to make sure, you know, you want to get this down. I always target, you know, 10 minutes because on a hot day especially, it will go fast. Now, 10 minutes is conservative. You probably have more time than that, but you want to use all 45 pounds of the aggregate, that one box for the one ramp. You may need a little bit more here. So the next step is to um, remove, remove the tape. This ramp at 75 degrees Fahrenheit will be ready to walk on in three to four hours. If the temperature is colder, it will take longer, potentially up to six to eight hours. If it's warmer, you may be able to walk on it in two to three hours. If you have any questions, you can contact us at info at rgfmaterials.com or go on our website, formatread.com. Thanks very much for watching.